We're about to calculate the term term matrix. The term term matrix is calculated from the document term matrix, the weighted document term matrix. The weights are not really all that important. It's just the fact that we have a document term matrix that's important. It's basically at its root, the term term matrix that is, is the number of, for, number of times two terms co-occur together in a document. Um, the assumption being is that if terms co-occur frequently with one another in documents, uh, that they are somehow related. Uh, this would be true in the case of synonyms. Uh, in, this, in a document, you might use the same, a different term for the same thing. Uh, so we would see synonym ca groupings. We would also see phrases. Um, for example, artificial intelligence, database systems, things like that. These are phrases, and uh, you will see the words co-occurring with one another. So we calculate the term term matrix, which is basically just uh, initially a, a um, count of, of co-occurrence. We then make that somewhat more sophisticated, get a better reading on that. But we start off with count. But once we've got a term term matrix, what can we do with it? Well, as I mentioned, we can detect term phrases. Why do we want to detect term phrases? Well, term phrases are often built out of high frequency words, like database systems. If you look at a computer a body of um, text from uh, computer science, you're going to say the word data and systems a lot. But database system or database systems is a much more specific term, and its frequency is going to be a lot lower. So one of the purposes actually is to develop term phrases to identify things like database systems, artificial intelligence, programming languages. And once we know that they are, in fact, phrases, uh, to feed back into the encoding system uh, this information so that when it sees a phrase like database systems, <laughs> it will encode it with a token. We'll make it into a word. Um, in my case, all I do is put hyphens between them, and it turns out to be one long word. Uh, but they are words. Um, one of the things that this also does is it prevents us from eliminating high-frequency words that are participants in uh, phrases. Like in, if we were going to use cutoffs for high-frequency and low-frequency words, data and systems would probably be cut out of the vocabulary in a computer science collection. They're very high-frequency terms. But they're important because they exist in phrases. Okay, term phrases uh, help us rescue high-frequency words, and uh, they also detect concepts that are not specified by uh, sing singular terms. In medicine, for example, they have a term for everything, singular terms. Not always, but most of the time. Uh, in computer science, it's a newer discipline. We don't have specific words for a lot of things. They tend to be composite words, words built up out of other, other words. Um, so term phrases can be quite important in some disciplines. Uh, the other thing, of course, is synonyms. Um, synonyms, detection of synonyms is important because when a user makes a query, they may use a term, but there may be a very closely related term they didn't use. We could enhance their query by adding the related term to the query, and that may bring in a, a lot more documents. As a result, this, this could increase our recall uh, in, uh, in a query um, environment. Um, synonyms can also be used to rescue low-frequency words. If we have a lot of words that are, that are below the cutoff threshold in terms of frequency, but they are related to one another, we could sum their frequency, and that may take them over the, um, over the threshold. So if we had, say, four words, A, B, C, and D, uh, D, and they were synonyms for one another, but they all had low frequencies. Collectively, however, their frequency might be large enough to make it over our threshold. So detecting that they are synonyms or closely related can help us rescue low-frequency terms that otherwise might be discarded. So <coughs> we've got so there's two uses of the term term matrix. Another use is term clusters. Once we get um, the uh, correlation between terms, we can start to build clusters of terms. Not some of these will be synonyms, of course, but not necessarily. We could um, so if you had an area of study, say a, um, a lot of articles on artificial intelligence, they would tend to use a certain set of words, terminology, um, it had, that would be specific to that discipline. We could detect that in a large enough collection. Um, we could build a cluster that would consist of the words from that area. And this can be done automatically. If we get a bunch of term clusters, we may be able to build a hierarchy of term clusters clusters of clusters, super clusters, as it were. 
<coughs> now these basically uh, term clusters. Um, so if I had a if I had a cluster of terms that um, basically um, mapped um, articles in artificial intelligence. Uh, this term cluster could be used for indexing. The type of indexing we're doing here is called derivative indexing. We're deriving the terms from the document. The other type of indexing is assignment indexing, where we get a document and we assign it to pre-existing categories. <coughs> if you look at the ACM um, uh, listing of um, of topics, uh, the categories or the mesh headings. These are pre-existing indexing schemes. They're hierarchical. They've been put together by experts. When we get a, you know, what what happens is when they get a new article to be published, they will see which categories, which subcategories on those uh, indexing schemes the article belongs to, and they will assign it to it. So that that's assignment indexing, where we look at the words in a document, we assign it to a category. <coughs> Likewise, if we get tight enough, <clears throat> excuse me, good term clusters, we can, um, so that they do reflect that they're not loose, they don't, they're not just a little bit of everything, but that they actually are narrow and they do define a certain particular area of study, we could actually assign documents to them. We could start going in the assignment direction. Uh, why is this um, desirable? Well, it's fast from a retrieval point of view. Uh, so a query comes in, the query is then matched with possible clusters, and once we get the list of clusters, <coughs> we can uh, quickly go to the documents associated with those clusters. It does, um, it, it is a fast way of doing it. So that's what we're going to look at with the term term matrix, and we'll look at that next. <coughs>